How you doing folks? Welcome back to Tappanoff Farm here in northeast Scotland. Rosa and I are up in an area of forest garden foraging away for plums today. Definitely the time of year to start bringing in a lot of our crops. Yesterday it was a beautiful sunny day, first sunny dry day in quite some time. So we decided to go and pick our onions and our potatoes. It's always nice to pick them on a sunny day so that we can start the curing process. Uh, it wasn't a huge crop of onions mostly because um, a bed of strawberries that was Next to the onions, uh, decided to start growing into the onion bed. Um, but we got onions and also a bed of strawberries for next year. So we took the onions and we laid them out in our small poly tunnel just to start drying. And we put the potatoes in our larger tunnel. That was just to dry the potatoes off, dry the mud that's on them. And then we'll put them in a sack for storage. But today we're up here in an area of forest garden where we've got quite a few plum trees. This actually used to be two plots, two vegetable gardens, um, when this area was mostly a market garden. But over the last few years, we've transitioned this area anyway, away from annual production uh, to focus on food forestry. This row of trees that you can see here 
and the one behind me. These were two forest garden tree rows that were planted in 2017. So these trees here are a good six years old, if not more, considering they're already a year or so old when they come from the nursery. The plums are doing really well. So this variety is called Sar, C-Z-A-R, and it's one that we've got planted around the farm quite a bit um, because we know it does well for our climate. I think of Sar as quite a dual purpose plum. Before it's fully ripened, it's, it's quite tart still and, and quite firm, so really good for cooking. So it does get to a point where it ripens on the tree where it becomes quite a good dessert variety as well. So you can see here, I've got this one which uh, just started to get that lovely bloom. So yeah, they're pretty much ready to pick. Um, we're actually picking them just a little bit early and hopefully they'll ripen inside to try and avoid the plums splitting because this is something that's happened quite a lot over the last couple of years with us. We'll go to pick the plums, they're looking really ripe and then we'll notice that they've all split open and that attracts a lot of flies and wasps to the plums. And this happens because of erratic um, weather conditions, um, a lot of rain followed by a lot of high temperatures and sun. This in turn makes the plum skin crack open, then the flies and the wasps get in and still edible but very difficult to pick because of the wasps and they do end up looking a bit gross after a wee while. So we're picking them today, they are all mostly edible but we're picking them just ahead of any splitting problems. So that's just the bottom ones, okay. um, there's a lot more at the top so you just have to get a ladder. All right. I think. Have to get a ladder. All right, there's still some up there, but I've got a pretty good haul. Don't quite have the right ladder. Um, definitely is a reason to keep your fruit trees pruned on the shorter side for reaching the fruit. Um, but hey, we've got some in the basket. We've got some crates filled. This, this is enough for uh, putting some in the freezer and using some straight away. And I'm sure I'll be back uh, to get the rest. 
some of them aren't quite ripe anyway so I'll let them ripen for a few more days before we get the ladder out and give it a second attempt. <laughs> And some rose hips? Yeah, I'm gonna um, soak these in glycerin and make a rose hip glycerite for my skin. It's like a tincture but made with glycerin as a solvent and I can use that on my skin. It'll be really high in vitamin C, other antioxidants um, and that'll just be really nourishing for my skin. I can kind of use it almost in place of moisturizer. So that's a new experiment this year. With those plums picked, we're going to head off to a different part of the farm for the afternoon. So I'm going to head down to the machine shed, get the BCS and trailer and head over to the west field, which is where we have our fruit tree silver pasture. There is some really great willow, nice young straight whips of willow that we're going to pick and bundle up to make tree hay. Alright guys, so we've come into the west field, into our fruit tree silver pasture. We've got the trailer, the BCS and trailer. And you see this nice hedge of willow that I've parked up in front of. We're going to make some tree hay from this today. <clears throat> we made a tree hay video a couple of years ago if you want to see a really dedicated video. This is something we love doing most years if we can. I don't think we've actually made... Oh, sweetheart. We haven't made a huge amount of tree hay. Um, in the last couple of years, I think since having Lily, uh, we haven't focused on that, but um, we're going to make a little bit now. Maybe a little bit late in the season, to be honest. Um, usually try and make tree hay. Tree hay being dried branches of palatable tree fodder that the goats like eating. Just like normal hay, like cutting grass and letting that dry, we cut branches of certain um, species of tree, uh, like willow and poplar and alder and we dry them to then be able to feed to the goats uh, in the winter when there's no leaves on the trees and not much grass to eat. It's a lot more reliable actually than cutting grass in our climate because we can store these bundles of tree very easily um, under cover to dry rather than trying to get good weather to make um, traditional grass hay from. Although today is great weather, this is perfect. The tree leaves are going to be nice and dry from the wind blowing uh, the branches, um, the sun being on them and yeah maybe we should be doing this maybe about a month or so ago maybe not the best time of year but it's not the worst. The leaves are still nice and green um, so hopefully still a lot of nutrients in the leaf. So Rosa's just got some baling twine from some hay bales yep. um, and we're going to use that just to wrap around these lengths of tree hay. So the willow that we've got here, this is a hedge that I planted ages ago, about 2016. If we were standing here last year, it was towering above us. And earlier in the year, about May, we cut it to ground level, so coppiced it. And you can see the regrowth is fantastic. It's six or seven feet tall already um, since May. So this is hybrid willow. This one's called Chinese willow. This was planted as a central row north to south row in this field like I said several years ago but over the last couple of years we've redesigned this whole field 
putting in these on contour species diverse plantings of fruit trees and fruit shrubs and other beneficial trees and shrubs um, with a 12 meter grazing strip in between. So you can see this row of willow is now straight through the middle of one of these grazing strips. So actually we don't really want to have the willow here although we're not really going to get rid of it either because the roots are very established um, and what this is going to mean is that when the goats are rotationally grazing through these rows of trees obviously we use electric wire to protect the fruit trees but when they're in this grazing strip eating the grass they're also going to get a chance to browse off any regrowth of these willows so lucky them really I think that's fantastic that we can design a, a goat foraging system to include trees that we don't mind them eating. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. She's ready. This should be really simple. Uh, these are really nice, long, straight, fresh bits of uh, willow. So we're just going to put out some of the baleen fine we've saved from the hay we, we get. Going to lay it out, lay lots of cut pieces of willow, tie it up, and then we're going to put it somewhere dry with good airflow. young willow is so easy to cut. We've made a lot of tree hay over the years, actually mostly cutting it from quite established trees, taking off branches or maybe a little bit of regrowth from a unplanned coppice. But this row was planted as a specific willow coppice, coppicing being cutting the tree down at ground level and letting it re-sprout. So while they might be quite thin, they cut very easily and bundle up really nicely. Nice and uniform, long, straight lengths of willow that we're working with. I was just using this old pruning saw, a little bit like a machete and just hacking through it. Um, you can even snap them off by hand if you want to be a bit slower. So we definitely need to get a lot more systems like this growing around the farm. Alright, I think we're gonna call it a day folks. Got quite a few good bundles of tree hay in the back of the trailer. We're gonna take this down to a nice shady airy building where it's gonna air dry over the next few months and it'll be ready to be able to feed the goats in winter time when there's no leaves on the trees and the grass is scarce. We're just gonna finish up uh, cutting a few of the larger willows that were left in this field and that's gonna be feed for the goats tonight. They're up in the north field. We're just going to go and get them um, and leave this tree in the goat shed as an evening snack. So I hope you're all well out there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time. See ya!